Hi, at this point in the series, you have a working RPG with either real-time combat or turn-based combat. Regardless of which path you chose, we are now gonna add leveling up in the game. So as you defeat enemies, you gain XP. And when you level up, your maximum health and damage go up. We are also gonna add a second enemy type that is harder to defeat on lower levels. But as you level up, it gets easier to defeat it. So let's open our project and get started. The first thing we're gonna do is give the player the ability to gain XP and levels. So for that, let's open the obj player object and then go to the create event over here. I'm gonna add a variable for the level. It starts at 1. Then the XP which starts at 0 and then a variable for how much XP you require to go to the next level. The way this is gonna work is this. When you get to this much XP, which is 100 for now, this value will be subtracted from the XP. For example, say you defeated an enemy and ended up with 120 XP. 100 will be subtracted from your XP, so you are left with 20 and your level will go up to 2. Then we are also gonna increase the XP requirement. So on the next level, it takes you 140 XP to level up and the requirement is gonna increase every level. Let's add a function that's used to add XP to the player. It takes one parameter, which is how much XP is to be added. In the function, we're gonna increase the XP by that value. Then we check if we have reached the XP requirement. In that case, we simply increase the level. Then we subtract the XP requirement from the XP, like I said before. And then we increase the XP requirement by multiplying it with 1.4. That increases it by 40%. Now that the level is up, we're gonna set the stats of the player. First of all, I'll increase the total health by 5. Then I'll set the health to the total health to heal the player fully. And then I'll increase the damage by 0.8. So it's up to you how much you want these stats to go up. And these are just the values that I'm gonna go with. Now we want to draw bars on the screen for the health and the level. For that, we'll use the SPR box sprite we have here that has 9 slicing enabled. So you can stretch it as much as you want and it retains its corners. For the text, we need a font. So let's go into the fonts folder and make a font asset here. I'll select a font I want to use and set the size. Now to draw the bars, let's go into obj player. In the events, I'm gonna add an event under draw. It'll be the draw GUI event. This event is used for drawing something directly on the screen instead of inside the room. And this is gonna use the size of the game window instead of the size of the camera. So anything you draw here will be one to one to the screen pixels on your monitor. Let's make some local variables here. We have the X position where the bar will be drawn, then the Y position, then the width of the bar, and then the height of the bar. I'm gonna set some text properties next. We are using the font we just made. Then we are setting the horizontal alignment of the text to center and the vertical alignment to middle. Next, let's figure out the width of the health bar. This will be the bar width multiplied with the HP divided by the HP total. Let's draw the base of the bar now. This will use draw sprite stressed and draw SPR box with its first frame. We'll use the X, Y, width and height that we created before. Then let's use a different function that lets us color the bar for the inside of the health bar. This will draw the second frame of SPR box. The X and Y will be the same, but the width will be the one we calculated for the health bar. Then the height will be the same and we'll set the color to red and the opacity to 0.6. That should draw the health bar, so now let's draw the text on it. We'll use draw text and draw at the center of the bar by adding half the width to the X and half the height to the Y. The text I'm drawing simply says HP. Now for the XP bar, let's figure out the width for it. This will be the bar width multiplied with the current XP divided by the total XP we need to level up. So the bar will be larger the more XP you have. Then let's move the Y position down by the bar height plus 8 to give it some margin. We're gonna draw the base of the new bar 
So let's call draw sprite stress with the same values as before. Then let's draw the second frame with the color version of the function. For the bar width, this is gonna use the new width we just calculated. The color will be blue and the opacity 0 0.6. Then let's draw the text over this. It will be drawn again at the center of the bar. The text this time will be a special string that begins with the dollar sign. This means the string can contain variables. It's gonna say level and then contain the level variable of the player. So it shows the current level there. And finally, we need to reset the properties we set, which are the alignments. I'll set them to their default values, which is left for horizontal and top for vertical. You can now run the game and see the health and the level appear in the top left corner. If you lose health, it will be reflected in its bar. We can't gain XP in the game yet, so let's work on that. We're gonna make enemies give us XP when we defeat them. So for that, let's go into obj enemy parent. In the variables over here, I'm gonna make a new one called XP underscore value and set it to 30. This is how much XP the enemy gives us and you can change it for different enemy objects. Now this part applies if you followed the real time combat video. I'll show the one for turn based soon. We'll go into the alarm one event of this object this is where we check if its HP is at zero, meaning the enemy is defeated. So under the same condition, we are gonna give XP to the player. I'll call the add XP function from the player instance and give it the XP value of the enemy. Now let me show you what to do if you followed the turn based combat video. Go to the enemy step event and under the condition where we check the HP, do the same thing. Call the add XP function from the player object and give it the XP value. So run the game. If you have real time combat, then defeating enemies here will give you XP. And the more enemies you defeat, the more XP you get until you finally level up. And then you have to collect more XP than before. Eventually, after you have leveled up a bit, you'll be able to defeat these enemies in just two hits instead of three because your damage has gone up. If you have turn based combat, then you will get XP when you come back from the end of a battle. And in the same way, you can keep fighting and increasing your XP until you can also defeat enemies in two hits. So the game's just gonna get easier and easier and honestly less fun. So let's add a second enemy that's tougher and requires a higher level so you can easily defeat it. I'm gonna make a new object and call this obj enemy 2. I'll give it the sprite for the second enemy. In the parent menu, I'll set its parent to obj enemy parent, so it's now an enemy object. It's gonna get the variables from the parent here, so we can tweak these to make it harder. I'll edit its HP and set it to 6, so that's double the health of the first enemy. Then I'll set its damage to 2, so it does more damage to the player. And also added the XP value, so you get more XP once you defeat this enemy. Now I'll open the game room and make sure the instances layer is selected. I'll first add the second enemy right at the start of the level, so we can test it at level 1. And then I'll place more of them further away in the level. Run the game. Try to fight this enemy in the beginning and you'll see it takes 6 hits to defeat it. Then go through the level, fighting the enemies and leveling up. And by the time I go to these enemies, I was level 3 and had higher damage. So here it just took me 3 hits to defeat this new enemy. So you can see how we keep leveling up and getting more and more stronger. You can now add more enemies further down in the level that are even harder and need a higher level to defeat. And this way you can make the combat progression of your game. That's it for this video. In the next one, we're gonna add dialog boxes to our game. So when that part is available, I'll see you there.